Hello all, welcome back to Learning Partner. If you are new, please do subscribe. This is another channel where you can directly connect with me. We have around 1000 plus members already who are working. We take live coding sessions and everything so to just get notified about those sessions. Please do join this group. So this is another interview question which you will have to face if you have more than four plus. Even two plus also has to answer some of it. Not they won't ask you to implement it. But at least you should have a basic idea like what is debouncing? How do we implement debouncing in Angular? And how do we do that same thing in JavaScript also? But if you have four plus year of experience, this is a very important question. Everyone is going to ask you. And the scenario which we are going to take is very normal one. So they will say like if you have a product, uh, let us let me show you the UI. Let us say you have something product like this and you have a single search box. So what happens once you type and on click of change, you have to get the whatever the data you are filtering. Let's say I search with mobile. So mobile data should come. Means on text box change, whatever the user type, that data, that value we need to pass to the API and API will filter out the record. So in this case, if you don't use anything, so what will happen? M for M, it will one API call, right? Whatever the character you type for that, those many API call will be triggered. Again, you can limit like maximum three characters or four character if user type, then you will limit. But again, like, Let's say user type MO, API call started. Again, he's write something. Again, API call. So previous API call doesn't matter, right? So here that debouncing switch map operator, everything will come. So that's the thing we are going to try. So what operator we are going to use? Debounce time, switch map, filter just to count the number of character type and distinct until change. This also I will explain. Now, so if you see the scenario, this is very simple. We have this, uh, this is just a static UI. Now the API which I'm going to use is from dummyjson.com. So here you can see I didn't had any search API. So I thought let's let's use some dummy one. So this is the API which you can pass the query parameter, whatever you type that you will pass. If you pass like this phone, so you will get array of some phone like this. So this API we are going to integrate over here. Now, this is the component which I'm going to use. This is just a static UI. Now let's go with very simple. So what we can do, Mm. by default also we need some data or let it be so we will create we are going to make use of the for reactive form again one more topic i will add that is form value changes how do you react to the reactive form control changes okay so now we just have a single text box right so there is no point to create the whole form group we can just create a form control also so let's create a form control for that so let's say search control is equal to, sorry, data type. Now we are not going to create the form group because we just have an individual text box. So we can create individual control also. So data type will be form control is equal to new form control. We will initialize with empty, fine. Now this control, we need to bind it over here. So how we can bind since we don't have form group. So directly square bracket form control, wait. Uh, we need reactive form model. Forgot that reactive form model we have to import. And here, form controller name. Why it's not coming? Form control. I don't know why it's not coming, but let's write it. Okay. So, what we did, we created a search control, and that control we have binded to the text box. Now, what we need to do, once the text box value changed, then we need to make the API call. So, Let's write constructor and in constructor what we can do on the text box value change means once the control value change so con search control dot value changes. So value changes will emit observable type of data whenever your search box value change this will trigger so we can subscribe to it. But instead of direct uh, what do we say instead of directly subscribing we will use our pipe operator because so many things we are to group over here. So pipe operator is lets you to group multiple RxJS operator. Fine. Now, so first operator which we are going to use it is the debounce operator. We need to wait until user type. Let's say user, let me show you the scenario that. Let's say user type uh, mob and he waits and again he type. So we don't want to uh, trigger API call if user stop for one or two seconds. We have to wait for at least three seconds, four seconds or even 10 seconds just to let user type everything. So that is nothing but debounce. So user will wait to trigger that. We are allowing that particular time of interval. If 
user type into that particular after particular uh, within that particular time of interval we won't make anything okay so that's the first operator we are going to use that's the debounce debounce okay so you can see operator got added over here now let's say we will wait for uh, five seconds first why we are getting error sorry debounce time okay not debounce debounce time so debounce time we have to pass the millisecond means uh, it will wait for the five second then uh, we will just uh, write the api call now now there is a operator that is switch map so what does switch map does let's say any current observable is going on means let's say those who are not familiar with because i can uh, the real term what we use when we talk about rxs operator is stream of data but everyone won't be understanding that and you also don't have to say this word in the interview right so just relate it with a particular example of api call so switch map operator is like let's say a api call is going on with some let's say if you have typed mob your api call started again you typed mobil so first api call which was going on that doesn't matter now because again new search parameter you have passed so you need to cancel that existing api call okay so that is how switch operator will switch map operator will come in it will cancel the existing api call it will it will consider the latest one so the same thing in a right terminology is like it will cancel out the original uh, existing stream of data and it will consider the new but you don't have to use it again they will go into deep like what is stream of data right that's just a technical word but you have to relate with your api call example fine now so or let's try without api call also then i will be able to explain properly let's say this okay we need http client so http colon sorry inject i'm using without anything so that i can show you how it is behaving without switch map and how it behave after the switch map fine right? http client let's go step by step and you also do the same thing without debounce also you try how it works okay but let's try without debounce so this dot sorry dot http dot get and this is my url let me copy paste it over here now here instead of phone why it is saying error mm. signature source observable and finally we are going to write subscribe now but why it is giving an error let me check mm, by default it will need return i think let me try return no this dot http dot gate we are simply writing it http client only we created every time something new will come okay let it be let's go with the switch map i also don't know like what went around now so let's use switch map now because we are writing in the pipe now so i don't know like what actually it needs switch map oh something is wrong what we did wrong Let's make it complete. Search term. So same thing we were doing earlier also, but why it was not taking, I don't know. Fine. So see what we have done. Let's try the console dot log. Yes, fine. So see, once the text box value change, we are having switch map operator and this search text, we will pass it over here. Okay. After this search text. Now see how API call will execute. Let's open. Let's observe the network call first. M-O-B. Can you see? For M also, it is going API call. M-B also, M-B also. And previous got cancelled. Because we have used the switch map operator. Okay. Let me try it again. Now we didn't add any time of uh, set time uh, means that debounce operator. Now. So for every key type means every 
value change it is navigating on API call. See, but previous are getting cancelled out. M, the search API call with M got cancelled out, M O got cancelled out because we have a new API call. So it will cancel out the previous API call. That is the use of switch map operator. If we don't have the switch map operator, it will trigger every API call and it will process also. Let me show you that also now. Let's copy this. Instead of value changes dot pipe, now I will go with subscribe. And inside subscribe, we will write it. String. Okay. Now this API call, I will put it over here. Search over here. Let's subscribe to this. Now you see the difference. How many API call will be there now? We have not added switch map and anything. Whenever text box will change, we are making API call. Fine. Now just observe the API call. M O B I L E. See all API calls are success. Got it. So if you don't use the switch map operator, the previous API call will be processed and all the API call. It won't cancel out or it will stop the previous API call. But in case of switch map, if the new API call is there, it will cancel out the previous API call. Pre previous API call. Okay. Now let's go back to our code. Let me comment this. Now the problem with this code, what is happening? Just observe properly. We are going with the switch map. M O B I L E. See. Every API call it is making for every character, uh, every character we are typing, it is making API call. It should, it should not be like that. It should wait for user to type. We should have give, we should give user to type complete search text, right? Now, if we add a debounce time, it's like we are allowing, we are giving some time for user to type. Now, see, we have added a five second interval. M O B I L E. No, not working. Five is, I think, millisecond. Let's do it 10. Let's save. No, something is wrong. Why it is giving still so many API call? We have added debounce time, 10. And then search text, we are passing it over here. Let's save and try again. It is working, it is cancelling out, but why it is making the previous API call also? That's the strange thing. We are writing value changes, pipe, debounce time we have. Then we are using switch map. Let's try to increase this to 50. No, still it is doing the same thing, but why? What's the use of debounce time then if it is not waiting? Debounce time is also correct, no? Yeah. Debounce time 50. Yeah, correct only. It will add a delay of that particular time. What is going wrong? And finally, we have a dot subscribe, right? Debounce time, switch map. Let me check up. I don't want you to get confused. Sorry, that was my confusion. So here like 10 means, it, I think it is millis before that millisecond also. So we have to go with, let's say if I go with 300. So I think it is waiting for three seconds then. Okay, let's try it now. Save. Let's reload one more time. Now just see the on the network tab, M O V I. Okay. See, I'm very typing very slow. Now let's see M O V I L E. Okay. It didn't make the API call. It wait for complete user type and then it triggered the API call. If I remove this debounce time, so it won't wait. And for every key change, it will make the API call. See. Understood? So debounce time is like it will give user some time to type and if user is ideal then it will trigger up within that particular interval okay so we are going with 300 so first we have reduced some api call up to uh, 3 millisecond then let's say you want to add a 
let's say minimum three character if we type then only you need to write so we are using filter now again in array also we have filter but this filter operator is from your array just see okay now here whatever the search parameter we get we just need to add a length check of that search colon data type string we will get search the same search dot trim because we need to trim it now we need to check the uh, we need to remove the extra spaces also greater than three and comma okay so now before executing this we are checking if the search character whatever user has type is the length is greater than three or not okay so let's see now if i type mo I am waiting. C, still API call is not there. B, nothing. I, C, one API call got triggered. Understood? So we have added a length check also. If user type minimum three character, more than three character, then only we are triggering our API call. Okay? Then we have one more operator that is distinct until change. Distinct until change. Now the use of this operator is like, it will check what was the previous or previous value and what is the next value. Okay, now this will come when we copy paste. Now see it properly. Or let's go without this. I'm commenting this. Let's open a search form and let's type it over here mobile. Okay. Now what I will do, I will search manually also mobile. Current value is mobile, correct? And if I again copy this and again paste this, again one API call is there. But it should not. Now, same value is there. Value didn't change. We copy pasted. Form value got changed. But actually, value didn't change. So here we can use that distinct until change. It will change. It will check existing value and the new value change or not. Okay. Then only it will allow the next operator to be executed. So now if I uncomment this, let's save and check now. Mobile. Sorry. mobile we have typed and again if i copy this and if i paste it no still it is doing something is wrong and yeah copy capital is there okay now the previous api call was was with capital again if i copied see now it's not making that api call okay so it is checking like what was the previous value it got changed or not like that it will allow a remaining operator to do its work so whenever you are getting asked like what is debouncing, how do you implement debouncing in your uh, Angular? So this is the code you have to quickly write. And scenario will be similar like this only. They will ask you like, let's say Amazon or Flipkart, you have some product list, you have a search box. How do you limit your API call, right? So this is what you need to do. And again, if you make sure you type this with your own hand, then only you will be confident. If you just, by looking at it, it's look very easy. Okay, trust me, it looks very easy, but when you actually want to explain it and if you want to write now, if you have not written it previously, now you will get confused. Surely you will get confused. This also happened to me, it is going to happen to you also. So make sure you write it at least two, three times, then only you will be more confident. Okay, so this is the another interview question everyone will face. Very most important, very obvious one also they are going to ask. Even though the project they have don't have this type of functionality, but Still, just to filter out the candidate, they will ask this. So make sure you are having hands on on this particular code. Okay. So that's it. Again, if you are finding this video helpful, now please do like, comment, help me to know that you are liking this content so that I can bring up some more interrelated topics also. Fine. That's it. Please do like and subscribe.